as some of you know, we were almost hit by Hurricane Irma. It did affect many areas in Florida. Uh, we went ahead and evacuated just because of my dad's health situation. We wanted to make sure that he wouldn't be stuck without power or water. Well, the wind's definitely blowing. You start to feel the effects of the feeder bands of the hurricane. All of this northeast wind. So, uh, yeah, it actually feels really nice. Uh, the thing about hurricanes is they're low pressure systems. So, it you know, drops the temperature. Usually it feels cooler and... Uh, yeah, you know, if it weren't for the potential of tornadoes and water spouts and heavy wind and rain damage, uh, it would be fun to do a hurricane party. And, well, that's kind of why you do a hurricane party, but when you have kids involved, it's not necessarily wise. This is a new look for the front porch. Inside. It's a jungle in here. Um, we can unlock. Um, red toes in the jungle if you get to a friend's mine. Yeah. Rumor, man, what do you think of our jungle? Do you like our jungle? Yep. Yep. I like it. Uh, it ended up being kind of a false alarm for us on the uh, Florida Panhandle up here in the northwest part of the state. You can keep your thoughts and prayers for those people in South Florida and Central Florida. There's some people still without power. Uh, so, I mean, there was a lot of people that did get affected very negatively by the storm. Pokemon. It's a frog Pokemon. It's a frog Pokemon? Yeah. Are you gonna, you gonna, gonna get close to him? I'll catch him. Alright, come him. close. Come close to him. Catch him, catch him. You can catch him. He's a tree frog, he's, he's a fun friend. But you gotta be very gentle with him. Very, very gentle. He's a little sticky, you will wash your hands out. Oh, he jumped so good. So how did the tree frog escape? What did he do to me? He did what? He peed pee on my hand, yeah. That was not too fun. So he escaped. You escaped today, tree frog. We'll uh, catch a picture of you later. So I think you and me have uh, more combined years of predicting hurricanes than Jim Cantori. So uh, yeah. what what do you think is going to happen here? I think it's going to be a shoe shoe. It's like a firecracker that don't go off. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a shoe shoe. <laughs> it's going to be one of those. <laughs> it's already weakened enough. And here we go. Driving out just to turn around and come back. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm looking at everything. I'm leaving, you know, just in case. But... Uh, I like everything to be fine. Yeah, even if it floods, I don't think it's going to get up in, inside. I, I don't think it will either. So one interesting thing that happened that I'd never noticed before, uh, one of my buddies took this picture of the Hidden Pier. We call it the Hidden Pier. It's out uh, west of us in a different county. And uh, normally the water is on this side of those pylons. Uh, the hurricane, due to its direction, I guess, literally like sucked the water out. Uh, from the bay and from our part of the Gulf right here. So it was way out, the, the shore went out way further than it normally does. It's very unusual. Not to make light of the damage the storm causes, but Floridians, we just kind of try to have as much fun with these things as we can because they happen a lot. So surfers enjoy storms because it brings big waves. Uh, this one did not for us. Uh, it came from a different angle, a very unusual angle for a storm to come. So we just kind of hung out on Saturday when we were waiting to figure out where the storm was going to come. So uh, that day, we met up with some friends of ours, the Whalers. Tim and Sarah and I, we went to high school together. So I never really hung out with Tim, but we've kind of gotten to catch up. He's a beer connoisseur and brews his own beer. So he decided to brew his own custom pale ale starting that Saturday. So we got to witness the process. And he decided to name it in honor of the storm. So we're calling it the Ermagerd Pale Ale or Irma Gerd, that's pale. I don't know, I just wanted to brew when I lived in Clearwater, so when we moved back here mm -hmm. and I had time, Sarah bought me a Mr. Beer Kit, which is like the, you know, bite of TJ Maxx kind of thing. Uh -huh. And I brewed a couple batches of two gallons of beer and was like, oh, I can actually drink this. Well, I started out with like a one gallon stovetop kettle, but that didn't work out. It's pretty stinky in the house. So then I got my dad's turkey fryer out of the back of the shed, and that's what we did the shrimp boil with yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I brewed with that, probably like 16, 18 batches. That. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I got this new kettle last year. Yeah. Now that's that's right. nice. That's what you're gonna taste. That that's nice. gonna make it bitter. And then this smells and then, like an IPA. Right. Yeah. That'll be the bottom. Absolutely. And the cool, we grabbed me one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. They look like something from a farm. Or farm animals. That <laughs> smells <laughs> like pelletized. Here's the one that's gonna smell like and taste like. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Both of these remind me. Not right. as intense, right? So you said this is yeah. British? This yeah, this is British? a British hop. Can we yeah, can like we, bittering can we hop. Room? Sure, get in there. Okay, so that. Slowly over time, just built up what I need. And mm -hmm. Like this time, this will be the first time I'm actually brewing and measuring my hops with a scale, I just would eyeball it. like, oh, here's an ounce of hops. I just kind of divide it out like this is a quarter ounce. So we're actually weighing it. We're getting scientific today. Okay, now this is, this is a rookie question. So what, you know, what are hops? It's, it's a vine and it's actually the flowers of a vine. That's exactly what it is. And it's, it's been around so long they found fossils of dinosaurs with hops in their stomach. It's been around a while. Okay, so it's the flowers of vines. And then yep. what grains do you use? It's mostly malted barley. This one, I'll have to check my recipe, but I think it's all malted barley. I probably mentioned this before, but my buddy in India, Larry, introduced me to Lafroig, which is by far my favorite whiskey on earth. It's a scotch that's famous for its very distinct taste. So we decided to introduce it to Tim and Sarah's friends and get their reaction. Not just Scott. I like it. Not bad. <laughs> I <laughs> like it. Got a little funky, uh... Tastes like cough medicine. <laughs> tastes like cough medicine, all right. <laughs> Absolutely. Tastes like, um... <coughs> Ooh, yeah, cough medicine. <laughs> I need to chase her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelsey, go. I don't want. I don't want to do this kind of stuff. Mm. Mm. Oh God! <laughs> I think I just grew a chest hair. That's <laughs> <laughs> bad. I mean, that's bad. My eyes are watering. That's the best advertisement you could come up with. No, right? that's terrible. My nose is burning. Get me something. I'm sweating. Oh God. <laughs> what What is the taste that comes to your mind? What What? item do you think of? I don't know. Yeah, Things that are name. not good. <laughs> Things that are not good. Everything that's not good. Can I get some water? Lafroig. It tastes like everything that's not good. It's what is your thought about Lafroig? No. No. It's burnt saddle. Burnt cowboy boot. Tastes like Scottish heaven. When every Scotsman gets to heaven, they get a little tap of Lafroig nonstop. Medicinal, medicinal. Very medicinal. Yeah, so, very medicinal. so this could be a decongestant, is that right? Absolutely. So this is this is our uh, air off um, for the blow off dude. Yeah. Meanwhile, we got a feeder band. Yep, feeder band. <laughs> Irma. I know. Irma Gerd's Irma coming. Gerd. Irma Gerd. All right. Yeah, that's good exercise too. The uh, fermentation chamber slash coat closet. <laughs> If I ever go to prison, I want to be with this guy because he can make some really good hooch. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Here we go. Okay. Magic, magic time. Here we are. That, that's it. Then yeah. you just, that's it. Huh? Yeah. be there a month. So maybe how right. Wow. Yeah. So IPAs have an interesting India connection, of course. Uh, the IPAs were first brewed by a certain brewery that was right next to the East India Company docks, and he brewed these high hoppy beers to help them uh, last and preserve through the long trip to India, and it became a very successful beer that was used uh, as a big export beer. Now hipsters like me drink them all over the world. So in about a month, we're going to check back with Tim and see how that Ermagir, that's pale pale ale, turned out. We consider this our marking ourselves safe during Hurricane Irma. We're still plugging along. So until next time, stay strong, stay glorious. And if you can't do either one, just keep on going until you can. Thank you.